After the interview, the Blackhawks released this statement. First, we would like to acknowledge and commend Kyle Beach's courage in coming forward. As an organization, the Chicago Blackhawks reiterate our deepest apologies to him for what he has gone through and for the organization's failure to promptly respond when he bravely brought this matter to light in 2010. It was inexcusable for the then executives of the Blackhawks organization to delay taking action regarding the reported sexual misconduct. No playoff game or championship is more important than protecting our players and staff from predatory behavior. The Blackhawks have implemented numerous changes and improvements within the organization, including hiring a new leadership team that is committed to winning championships while adhering to the highest ethical, professional, and athletic standards. It's been an emotional week, John Tortorella. What's your reaction when you uh, have seen it all play out? I'll answer your question with a question of my own. You have seven or eight grown men, solid people, solid hockey people, talking about this situation, and they come up with this answer. The question I have is, what if it was your boy? What if it was your 20-year-old? Would your decision be different? Um, yeah, I, 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 I just don't understand it. That, that, that is something, uh, uh, that's the question I have. It's your, if it's your kid, would you act this way? It always comes back to the golden rule. Uh, Greg, kind of pivot off what Torch just said. It's difficult to be a hockey fan sometimes, and um, I think this week was one of the most difficult ones. Joel Quenville should have been nowhere near that bench last night in Florida. Nowhere near it. The NHL has done it before where they have suspended players indefinitely pending a hearing. Um, either the Florida Panthers or the National Hockey League should have taken Joel Quenville off that bench last night because we just got done hearing Kyle Beach speak about at the crux of the Blackhawks situation is the decision to value a playoff race and a chase of the Stanley Cup over the safety of a player, humanity, morality, the law. And when I look at Joel Quenville on that bench last night, I say to myself, that's exactly what's happened here. You know, pending this investigation, pending his meeting with Bettman, it's valuing him being behind the bench and trying to keep a team undefeated versus what would have been a logical and image-saving move for the league and the team last night. Just off of that, and that's, what, that's what's crazy to me, is it's, it's multiple people. This wasn't a one-man decision. It's multiple people. I, I just don't get why one guy couldn't just stand up and say, you know what, no. This is wrong. It, 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 to me, hockey and, and things that go on in the locker room, all the situations you go through, sure, it happens a lot during the year. This is, this is totally different. This is, this is sexual assault, which is far, it casts a shadow over the game of hockey. And that's what, that's what kind of is crazy to me, that one man couldn't stand up and say, you know what, no way. We have to get this strained out right now. Walk down the hallway and walk him out the door. How difficult right away. Would that, how difficult would that have been? Right away. And, and, and push him out the door. Uh, again, we assume right now, uh, perhaps at this moment, Gary Bettman is meeting with Joel Quenville uh, in New York City. We'll see what happens when that is over and what comes of it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.